So there's a reason why Frederick Mahl's fragrance Dries van Noten must have gotten discontinued because Dries van Noten as a brand, a fashion house, is launching their own set of fragrances. Twelve fragrances have just been announced. In fact, I believe ten of them are on the Dries van Noten website currently. Two are not there yet, but there's a total of twelve. And I'm going to talk to you about this uh, collection, an overview anticipation uh, video here on all of the fragrances, all coming right up. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian. Yes, today I'm talking about Dries Van Noten's fragrances. Uh, apparently, Dries Van Noten has joined with Puig, P-U-I-G, a company out of Spain who also has brands like Comme des Garçons, uh, Christian Louboutin, uh, Jean-Paul Gaultier, uh, Carolina Herrera, and a bunch of other brands. So now he's signed with them, and he's launching a bunch of beauty products in addition to 12 fragrances. And these bottles look amazing to me. That's kind of why I wanted to do a video on this house and the anticipation of these fragrances. They're currently on the Dries Van Noten website, but uh, there's only 10 there. And the thing is, I'm unable to get them here because I, I don't know of a Dries Van Noten, you know, store here. So will they arrive here in the States? Will they go to a department store? Or how are we going to get our hands on these most amazing looking bottles? Either way, I'll let you know all about these fragrances, plus a few more words on why this might have gotten discontinued, which I, I guess it's probably because he's launching his own brand. But before I get to the fragrances, if this is your first time tuning into the channel and you still haven't subscribed, please do click the subscribe button below and also click the bell so that you don't miss out on future videos and giveaways. So this collection of fragrances just got announced last week. As soon as I saw them, uh, I, I get an email sent to me from various uh, resources uh, and I get a lot of you know perfume fragrance and skincare beauty kind of uh, email sent to me and when I saw this I was like whoa these fragrance bottles look amazing I think the collection the bottles are all really really great looking I'm a very visual person so I like the look of bottles and that kind of basically pulls me into the to the brand to check them out so if the fragrance or the bottles themselves look kind of uh, cheesy or not very uh, luxury because these definitely look luxury. I kind of kind of skip over them, which probably I shouldn't do. But uh, they got uh, these uh, fragrances uh, got me really excited, so that's the reason I'm putting this video together. But now it does really make sense, at least to me, it makes sense why this got discontinued. I think it was it's been like a year or two years since this is discontinued, and this is a fragrance collaboration that Dries Van Noten did with Frederick Mall. The fragrance itself is called Dries Van Noten. Uh, Dries Van Noten par Frederick Mall. So he's a fashion designer. I don't know much about his fashions. Not really readily available here. It's from Belgium. It's a Belgium brand. So um, that's probably why I don't know too much about uh, the, the house or the, the brand itself. But now I will definitely find out more about Dries Van Noten as a brand, especially since they're entering the uh, fragrance market. So they're coming in 100 ml bottles that are refillable and they are 220 euros so most likely these will be around 250 when they reach the states maybe just a little more than that but somewhere around there and then they do come with uh they don't come with you can also buy 200 ml refills which retail for 200 ml for 260 euros so 40 euros more than the 100 ml which you get sort of a basic glass bottle like the Killian bottles are uh, but it comes in this beautiful wrapper that it takes on the look of the actual bottle of the original fragrance you're buying so this sounds really really great I really like the look of the bottles I'm gonna tell you about the fragrances but one last thing about um, uh, the concentration and things like that they are uh, eau de parfum concentration fragrances but it's interesting that they're launching 12 fragrances at once that's a lot of fragrances but uh, let's go ahead and talk about cannabis patchouli I'm going to go in order of, uh, in alphabetical order. So Cannabis Patchouli, a 2022 launch created by Nicholas Bonneville. And the notes are patchouli, cannabis, clary sage, vetiver, musk, bergamot, cedar leaf. So this bottle is quite gorgeous. It's that brown green bottle combination. And I think I'm, I'm, I'm like really, really impressed with the quality of these bottles. That 
that's kind of why, like I said, I'm doing this video because I'm so excited to get my hands on them. Not only the bottles, but also smell them because patchouli cannabis together, it's been done before. Maison Margiela did one called Music Festival and they combined cannabis and patchouli. But here, I think it's going in a little different direction, but still overall very earthy, woody, kind of green and camphoric and very, very aromatic and woody as well. So. I'm looking forward to this particular fragrance, but let me know what your thoughts are on the bottle for this particular fragrance or the bottles in general for the whole entire collection. All right, next fragrance in alphabetical order, it's Fleur de Mal. Uh, this is created by Quintam Biche, and this bottle is really, really gorgeous. The bottle is purple and kind of maroon spotted kind of uh, black. I really like it. I really, really do like this bottle. I think I'm in love with all the bottles, and that's what I should say. But the fragrance itself sounds great, especially it's created by Quintam Biche. The notes are suede, amber, osmanthus, jasmine, peach juice. So, seems like a leathery, ambery, fruity fragrance. Osmanthus definitely has fruitiness. There's floral touches in this one as well, so exciting. What do you Think. Do you enjoy the fragrances of Quintam Biche? Quintam Biche has two fragrances in this collection. One of them is not on the website yet. But moving on, Jardin de la Orangerie, created by Daniela Andrie. She's done a lot of fragrances for Prada. And the notes for this one are orange blossom, milk, sandalwood, jasmine sandback, ylang ylang, bitter orange bud. So this one, obviously, the colors of the bottles kind of uh, take on the, the look or the style of the fragrance that we're going to get. So it's a milky kind of, almost seems like it's gonna be an orange creamsicle kind of a thing. It does have the sandalwood, it does have the orange blossom and the milk. And then you have these kind of tropical flowers and white flowers, some bitter orange experience. I like the sound of it. Let's uh, smell it and see how it, it is. And we'll judge after that. But moving back to the house of Christian Louboutin, I first dismissed that collection because I'm not a big fan of the brand itself. I know it's got a huge following. The brand is also under pooch, just like this brand. I think I came back to the fragrances. In fact, I have all the fragrances now. I think they did a good job. I think Pouge and Christian Louboutin and their fragrances did a, a really good job. And some of the fragrances uh, that are made for Christian Louboutin are also made here for uh, Dries Van Noten. So Jardin de la or uh, Orangerie does sound great. I like the idea of an orangery and a garden, things like that. So it does sound really nice to me. The next fragrance is Neon Garden created by Fanny Ball. The notes are musk, ambroxan, carrot seed, orris root, spearmint, peppermint. So this one seems like a very powdery, musky kind of an experience. You know, you've got that ambroxan in here and you also have musk. Carrot seed has a kind of iris quality to begin with. It's powdery, a little vegetal, and then the orris root. And I'm not sure where the spearmint and peppermint come in here. Kind of seems like it would contrast very interesting, but I like the name Neon Garden and it makes sense to add the spearmint and peppermint in this particular fragrance. And once again, I'm curious to smell this one as well as I do enjoy the fragrances of Fanny Ball. Fanny Ball has done fragrances for Frederick Mall and Costume National, at least the ones I know of. Moving on to Orange Smoke, and Orange Smoke is not on the Dries Van Noten website. This one is created by Anique Minardo, a fan, I'm a fan of her fragrances, although she had not been doing a lot of fragrances for a while, but now I see her name come up quite a bit. And I like the idea of smoke and oranges together. It sounds pretty interesting. And the notes for this one are mandarin orange, petagran, neroli, jasmine, orange blossom, myrrh, frankincense, a papanax, musk. The, the, the combination is great. And I think Anique Monardo really does know resins. She's done a great fragrance in Bois d'Armony. She did for Guerlain. She also did uh, Bois d'Argent for Dior. Both of those combine resins and I think she knows those resins very well. This particular bottle seems like the most boring bottle out of the entire collection. Doesn't do much for me. Uh, but again, the fragrance itself sounds really, really nice. I like that whole uh, citrusy, fresh, uh, you know, citrus notes to kind of like develop into this kind of like more heavy, dense, resinous, uh, musky notes in the base. So orange smoke sounds really, really nice. I really do want to try this one, even though this particular bottle probably seems like the most boring out of the entire collection. So Raving Rose, I like that name a lot. I used to go to a lot of raves back in the early 90s. And uh, does it uh, have anything to do with music? No, probably not. 
but it's a rose themed fragrance and I like the idea of a rose th themed fragrance. This is created by Louise Turner. Not too familiar with her perfumes, but I have seen her name come up quite a bit. This one features notes of cashmere and musk, rose water, damask rose, absolute, pink pepper, and black pepper. So once again, you've got this kind of musky note of cashmere and you also have the addition of musk. And then you move on to lots of rose and then you've got the spices, pink pepper, black pepper. Pink pepper, I think, does really complement rose smells a lot. So this one sounds like it's going to go into like a musky, spicy, rosy direction. I, I like the name and I also like the, the, the bottle itself, the colors, and then the, the fragrance itself sounds great too. So moving on to Rock de Myrrh. Rock de Myrrh, Myrrh is a great note. Uh, this is created by Amélie Jacquin or Jacquin. I don't know this perfumer very well. In fact, I don't know her at all. I haven't seen her name come up, but this seems like the name Myrrh is in the, uh, the name of the fragrance or the word Myrrh is in the name of the fragrance. So this definitely seems like it's going to go resinous and it does feature some really, really dense notes. Suede, benzoin, labdanum, myrrh, patchouli, cypress, pink pepper. And once again, the bottle looks great. I really love the bottle and I want this particular bottle. Is the fragrance going to smell great? I don't know, but I like the notes. I like the idea of the notes. It seems like it's going to go ambery. That labdanum, the benzoin together along with the myrrh makes sense. I like the idea of this particular fragrance. So we shall see how rock the myrrh is. Moving on to Rosa Carnivora. This is created by Daphne Bouget. Daphne Bouget has also done uh, fragrances for the Christian Louboutin collection, who's also under Pouge. And I like her fragrances. In fact, I really like the sound of this particular one. Patchouli, cystus, vetiver, floral notes, pink pepper, damask rose, rose centifolia. Unfortunately, the, the color of this particular bottle seems a little flat to me, but the base part, the kind of like zebra looking part, looks really nice. I just wish the top was a little more colorful, like a more standard out vibrant vivid color but the actual fragrance sounds really really nice to me so I'm curious to try this and I do enjoy Daphne Bouget's fragrances she's done a lot of L'Artisan Parfumer fragrances she's done um, Le Labo she's also done of course the, as I said the Christian Louboutin fragrances moving on to Santal Greenery this is a fragrance created by Nisreen Buzao, Grillet, and Amélie Jacquin. So I know the, the perfumer Nisreen, I've seen a few of her fragrances, but Amélie Jacquin as well, as I mentioned, I don't know too well. And also, I don't know if this particular fragrance sounds great to me. I love sandalwood separately and I love green fragrances uh, separately. Does this, it, it, maybe it'll work. This kind of seems like it's going into the direction of something like Philosicus or Premier Figuier because uh, it's sandalwood, it's creamy, kind of milky, and then also going into the fig, fig leaf, fig fruit. So the notes are sandalwood, white musk, violet leaf, fig, fig leaf, bergamot, grapefruit. So to me, that's what it sounds like it's going to smell like. Um, so is it going to smell like that? But this particular bottle I'm obsessed with. I really want this particular bottle. Um, in fact, I want the whole entire collection, but I want the bottles that are more standard out more vivid you know and have a contrast really kind of like a dark top and a kind of a contrastable base or vice versa so the bottle itself looks quite amazing so we shall see how the fragrance is but it does sound like it's going to go into kind of like a figgy milky kind of a green fragrance so the next fragrance is called Swa Malachi uh, created by Marie Salamagna who also did fragrances for um, the uh, Christian Louboutin a collection. I think she did one. She did the vanilla for that uh, collection, but she's done a lot of other fragrances. She's busy. She's from Fermanish, uh, the, the conglomerate. But this particular fragrance sounds great, and she does do great vanilla. She did a fragrance for uh, Atelier des Ors called L'Unfeline, so she knows uh, vanilla. And I believe she did uh, By the Fireplace from the house of... Um, uh, what is it called? Uh, another another Belgian house, uh, Maison Margiela. So she's added chestnut in this particular fragrance, so it sounds like it's going to go gourmand. So we've got chestnut, cocoa, vanilla, rosa centifolia, silk, bergamot, and black currant. The combination sounds a bit odd, strange. Rose with the, the chestnuts and the cocoa vanilla, although I do like rose gourmands. So we shall see how it is. It sounds like it's going to be nutty, going to be chocolatey, vanillic, and then of course some fruitiness in there as well. This one actually intrigues me quite a bit. I quite like the notes even though they sound like they're not going to work very well. But this bottle looks quite amazing. I love it. I traveled to Portugal several years ago and I saw the tiles and this one actually takes on that look and I, I'm obsessed with the, the bottle. So this, this bottle I definitely want to have 
And of course, Marie Salamagna did this fragrance and she does really good fragrances with vanilla. So we shall see how it is. So this next fragrance is called Sur Ma Peau. This is the second fragrance by Quintan Biche. This is also a fragrance that's not on the Dries Van Noten website. And this is also a boring bottle, just like the other one that's uh, not on the Dries Van Noten website as well. The, uh, this orange smoke one, uh, boring bottle. Same with this one, it's a boring bottle, but Quintan Biche has done two fragrances for this collection. So the notes for this one, Sur Ma Peau, are bergamot, pink pepper, orange blossom, mandarin orange, cinnamon, tonka beans, benzoin, whatever, vanilla. So the combination sounds interesting, although not as intriguing as the last fragrance, but uh, I'm curious to smell it. But it wouldn't draw me in as much because the bottle itself looks kind of boring. So we shall see how it is. But I don't understand why these two fragrances, Orange Smoke and Sur Ma Peau, are not already on the, um, the Dries Van Noten website. Maybe they're coming later. Who, who knows? I don't know. And the last fragrance I'm going to talk to you about is called Voodoo Chili or Chile. Uh, I think, is it Chile or Chile? I think it's Voodoo Chile. Uh, and this is created by Nicholas Beaulieu, Bol I think is how you say the name. This one features Virginia cedar, New Caledonian sandalwood, mastic resin, Indonesian patchouli, cannabis, and rosemary. The bottle itself is not my favorite, but I don't hate this one as much as I hate the, the kind of plain bottles that Sur, Sur Ma Po and Orange Smoke are in. This one actually has some unique things going for it, but it doesn't draw me in as much because it's not as vivid and striking as some of the other bottles. I like that patchouli cannabis is kind of come back. It's already a, a separate fragrance on its own, but this one has the resinous touches plus lots of woods and that kind of like bitter, lightly camphoric, aromatic rosemary note. So kind of sounds like an appropriate name for this fragrance, Voodoo Chile. I like the name of it. Anyway, uh, it's kind of interesting, uh, but uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to the entire collection. I just hope they make it here. I don't know what the current status of the world and um, with some brands that don't have a reach in some countries, I don't have a good feeling about this collection. We shall see. Uh, at least, I mean, I have a good feeling about it, but I don't have a good feeling for it to come here. Does Dries Van Noten have a huge following in the States? I don't ever see his um, clothing, anything, anywhere. But I don't know. We shall see. I'm excited for it. I want to get to sample these fragrances. If I can't get my hands on any of them anytime soon, I might try to figure out a way to order them from somewhere. We shall see. But let me know your thoughts on the collection. Let me know if you were a fan of uh, this fragrance from Frederick Mall, Dries van Noten par Frederick Mall. And uh, do you think the reason it got discontinued is because he's launching his own beauty and uh, perfume or fragrance collection? Let me know. Put a comment down. And out of the fragrances I discussed today, which one sounds the best to you? Are you excited for this collection? Do you like the bottles? Do you hate the bottles? I'm obsessed with the bottles. I love them. But some of, some of the bottles I like a lot more than the others. And probably I'll go towards the ones I really like and get those before I, uh, you know, get the other ones if I can. Uh, and hopefully I can smell them somewhere here before I do a blind buy. But if I do a blind buy, I would definitely blind buy the great looking bottles that also have great notes uh, attached to them, if that makes sense. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching today's video on the new Dries Van Noten fragrance collection. Let me know if you have any questions or comments. Uh, and. Um, I'm happy to answer as much as I can. Uh, other than that, please like this video, please share it, follow me on Instagram and Facebook, and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye.